Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah Welcome to another session of our program, Let Us Reflect. Today our topic is Righteousness Erases Sins. How does this happen? What has the Qur'an said about this particular subject? Did our beloved Prophet ﷺ mention anything specific about this subject? Insha'Allah I will reveal some prophetic traditions in light of this topic. Before I do that, I would like to share with you a narration from Nasa'i which expresses the excellence of sending blessings in favor of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, an action we refer to as durud sharif or salat ala nabi. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam once addressed a man who performed a certain, or completed a certain sequence of good actions. Yes, what did he do? This man, he offered the prayer, salah, and then he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after that he sent a supplication of blessings in favor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He, he expressed salat ala nabi. So he, three things, he offered the prayer, he then praised Allah and then he sent salawat in favor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam addressed him saying, supplicate, it shall be accepted. Ask and it shall be granted. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Moving on to the main part of our program today, righteousness erases sins. How does this happen? Well, the title itself, the topic itself is quite clear. It's self-explanatory. When you do good deeds, those good deeds, good actions will actually erase your sins. Before I mention anything else, um, I would like to explain this concept. I would like to start by introducing a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu and then the commentary provided by the scholars of hadith. First, I would like to mention a hadith tradition which explains this concept of righteousness erasing sin. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu specified this concept and this is mentioned in this particular hadith. It is reported, An Abi Zarrin, Jundub ibn Junada wa Abi Abdir Rahmani Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma who are the reporters Sayyiduna Abu Zar and Sayyiduna Mu'adh bin Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma may Allah be pleased with both of them. An Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال, they reported from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that he said, اتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتَ Wherever you are, fear Allah. وَأَتْبِئِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا And follow a sin with a good deed, it will erase it. وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ and meet the people with good character. So this hadith narration mentions three statements of advice, very clear for the believers. The first thing that our beloved Prophet ﷺ mentioned was that wherever we are, we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second point being directly linked to our topic today or the main theme of today's program, that if you that follow a sin, Meaning if a sin is committed, then follow that up with a good action. Why? The reason was given by our beloved Prophet wasallam that the righteous deed itself will erase the sin. So here the concept is very clear and uh, this is declared by the Prophet wasallam in the narration. And the third thing that was mentioned 
When you meet the people, meet them with good character. If we adopt all three traits, no doubt we shall attain success. Now let us consider what the scholars of hadith have said about this particular hadith tradition. And we start with Sayyiduna Mullah Ali Qari alayhi rahmah. In his commentary, he mentions a few points regarding this hadith. He says that to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means to fulfill the necessary elements of the religion and to refrain from uh, evil or evil actions. He also mentions that piety is the foundation or the pillar of faith and through piety one attains the levels of certainty. He mentions that the minimal or a minimal level of piety is this that a person does not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's like the minimum in terms of the vast or the scope of taqwa. So the scope of taqwa is great and something which is minimal in this is that you do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, a greater element of this taqwa is that you turn away from everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning one's focus is only um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sole focus of the individual. One is only worried about or concerned about pleasing his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, this is a very a great level of piety. This is something which we can aspire to uh, attain. So here he mentions this. He says there are levels in between. So you have the, the minimal level of not associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the greater levels of turning away from everything or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentions that there are levels, obviously levels in between both uh, men, that were mentioned. He also mentions that generally turning away from sin, this would be considered a lesser degree because this is expected of the believer. This is expected of the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an expectation that we should try to refrain from sin. And then slightly better than that or a, or a slightly higher degree of piety than that, than refraining from sin is to refrain from disliked elements. Because disliked elements are not necessarily, they do not incur sin, but because there is a disliked undesirable element in them, it's better to avoid them. So obviously, it's more difficult to do that usually and the level of piety is considered to be greater as compared to refraining from sin. And then he mentions to refrain from permissible actions or actions which uh, doing it or not doing it is the same as the fuqaha, the jurists define it, mubah actions. So some actions, uh, you do it, there's no reward. If you refrain from it, there is, uh, there is also no reward. But obviously intentions do count in, e in these matters. An intention can change a mubah action into a rewarding action. But generally speaking, such actions, if you avoid an action like that, which is permissible, uh, with uh, this thought of attaining a higher degree of taqwa or increasing your consciousness or increasing your inclination to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that degree of piety is higher than refraining from sin and refraining from the undesirable. This is what Mullah Ali Qari alayhi rahmah is clarifying. He also mentions wherever you are, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This obviously means whether you are alone or whether you are uh, in public, among people, in both, uh, in every state, in, in both states and in every st state, generally speaking, we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about uh, our outward and the inward. What we think, our feelings, our intentions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of all these things. So he clarifies that um, this means whether you're alone or whether you're in public among people, uh, you should uh, be in a state of awareness. He also specifies that this awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or having this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should be in every state, meaning he specifies that whether one is granted blessings or one is facing calamities in every state, this awareness or this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be apparent in one's behavior. Mullah Ali Qari alayhi rahmah, he then mentions, uh, he quotes um, an account of Sayyiduna Dawud Ta'i Alayhi Rahma, who was a great saintly scholarly figure and a man of insight, a man who was granted kashf and 
He was once walking, he once heard a, a, a voice coming from a, a grave nearby and it said something like this, did I not give zakat? So he's hearing this now, the imam is. Did I not give zakat? Was I not someone who offered the prayer? Did I not maintain a certain good deed? And then whoever was saying this was answered and the imam heard the answer as well. What was the answer? The answer was, of course. No doubt you did all these things, but you used to sin when you were on your own. So in this particular account, Mullah Ali Qari Ali Rahmah has cited it, the clear lesson and clear reminder and clear warning is that in this particular case, a man who may have uh, given his zakat and fulfilled his, uh, offered his prayers and did other good actions, unfortunately those good actions did not lead to his salvation. It seemed as if he was still in some kind of uh, punishment possibly or he was in some kind of distress in the hereafter, in the grave. What was the reason for the distress faced by this individual in the hereafter, in the grave? He used to sin on his own. We have to think about ourselves now, really. Think about ourselves, ask ourselves this question. We may or may not uh, succeed in avoiding sins in front of people, family members, siblings, parents, friends, people outside, people who may look at us and consider us to be honorable or have respect for us. But what is our condition alone? We have to be honest with ourselves. On one side, we accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us and then on the other side we we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the audacity in, in disobedience it's like there's no care whatsoever we really have to wake up from this sleep of heedlessness wake up and realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us we have uh, our life is a trial our life is a test so let us do the best that we can let us do the best of deeds. Let us increase our good deeds and let our good deeds be more than our sinful actions. With the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any one of those good deeds could become a means of salvation for us. More commentary related to the hadith narration that we mentioned in the beginning. Imam Sharfuddin Hussein bin Muhammad bin Abdul Latibi alayhi rahmah, he mentioned some interesting things about the concept of a good deed erasing sin. And he explains the concept of opposites, how opposites have an effect on each other, how opposites affect each other in some way or are linked in some way. And he mentions that due to the fact that good deeds or righteous deeds are the opposite of sin, these uh, righteous deeds have been made uh, a means to erase the sin. So the opposite state of the sinful state have became the state to erase the evil or the sin. The Imam also gives other examples. He says, in terms of uh, music, the expiation for that, or to make up for the sin of uh, listening to uh, music or musical instruments is that one recites the Quran and attends the gatherings of dhikr. You see, because from the satanic, uh, from the satanic deed, or, or the, even if it's a gathering, then a satanic gathering to um, a heavenly gathering, or a gathering which is such a blessed gathering, those who gather to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings of Allah descend upon them, the angels surround them. We know this from sound prophetic traditions. So if someone was involved in uh, the sinful element of music, now he should make up for that through recitation of the Qur'an and through sitting in gatherings of remembrance. The Imam also mentions that if someone uh, consumes alcohol, drinks alcohol or uh, any intoxicating drink, then the way to counter this is to express generosity by giving others uh, that which is halal to drink, meaning expressing generosity in this way. giving. Uh, you can give fruit juice to people, you can give water to people, you can make an arrangement, um, have a well dug up and provide water for people in this way. So that would be an expiation for the consumption of anything that was haram like alcohol or any such uh, intoxicating drink.
Mufti Ahmad Yarkha Naimi alayhi rahma, he mentions in light of this particular hadith tradition that taqwa has many levels and the first level of taqwa is to turn away from incorrect beliefs, from beliefs of deviance. This is uh, obviously beliefs come first. These beliefs are the foundation. Even when you look at the Qur'an, the narrative of the Qur'an, uh, Iman is mentioned before righteous deeds are mentioned. And one can do as many righteous deeds as he can, but if he does not have Iman or the right Iman, or he does not have the correct beliefs, then those efforts are fruitless because acceptance is attained only after faith is embraced and maintained, preserved in the correct way, with the correct beliefs. Then he mentions the second level of uh, piety or taqwa is to refrain from um, evil deeds or to refrain from sinful deeds. The third level of taqwa he mentions is to refrain from undesirable, rather uh, doubtful matters. The fourth level of taqwa that he mentions is to refrain from things which uh, are needless, are pointless. So to actually turn away from things that do not give one benefit, do not, do not uh, have any benefit, a worldly benefit or religious benefit. Things which are needless, you turn away from them. That's the fourth level of taqwa which he mentions. And the fifth level of taqwa, the final level of taqwa or piety which he mentions is to refrain from anything which becomes a veil. The assumption is that the veil here is a veil between himself and uh, making his connection and bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stronger. Remember, the essence, the pinnacle of taqwa was what? That you turn away from everything and anything and you focus your attention or the, your sole focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mufti Ahmad Yarkha Naimi alayhi rahmah, he also mentions uh, explaining the part of the hadith where it was instructed that meet the people with good character, he mentions that one should be a tolerant and forbearing in when facing problems or difficulties from other people. So this is also part of good character. So although the first thought which comes to mind is that one's own conduct, personal conduct, is such that he does good deeds, in this case, although the first thought which comes to mind when you think about this, uh, the statement of meeting people with good character is that your positivity and your character itself is something which is displayed or uh, it's, it's a case of ensuring your etiquette is correct. Uh, Mufti Ahmad Yarkha Naimi, alayhi rahma, he begins by saying that you should be tolerant, forbearing when you face problems or difficulties from other people. And... How can you do this? How can you express good character? A very important point he mentions after that, by spending your money. Yes, expressing generosity. Expressing generosity has a, a big part to play in good character. People who have good character and are truly well-mannered are people who are generous. This is the hidden treasure of the believer. Believers should naturally, it should come naturally to them that they express generosity when they serve others to, uh, ex as an expression or reflection of good character. And obviously the last thing which he mentions is that when you meet people, meet them in a positive way, um, in a good way, and also uh, be helpful to them in, when, in their time of need, when they face calamities or problems, you're there for them. When you are there for someone in their time of need, they will definitely remember that and they will uh, value that, appreciate the fact that you were there for them when they were in a time of need. So let us be those who are um, a shoulder for others, who are a, a means of moral support for others, those who uh, counter the negativity which brings people down. And let us be those who make people stand and keep them standing. Let us be among those who encourage others, who express such friendship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people are inspired and people in turn do the same for other people. Let this be a chain reaction. Our positivity rubs off on someone else and, then, and their positivity rubs off on another. Let this be part of... Um, a continuous deed of generosity and good character. In light of the statement uh, or the instruction of the Prophet Sallallahu to follow a sin with a good deed as that good deed will erase that sin, 
we, this concept is reiterated. This concept is also mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Inna al hasanati yudhibna sayyat. Indeed, good deeds, righteous deeds, what do they do? They erase sinful deeds. They erase evil deeds. So there is a confirmation for us in the Quran. If we make a mistake, straight after that, try to do more good or try to do a righteous deed to make up for that wrongdoing. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this becomes a means of salvation for us. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said, أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا That the most complete of the believers in terms of iman, in terms of faith, is the one who has the more beautiful or the better character. So character is very important in Islam, especially in light of this particular hadith, that um, the best of people or the most complete in terms of faith are those who have a better character, a more beautiful character. So here we are in this world competing for matters of this world, competing for a better house, competing for a better car, competing for better clothing, competing for more luxuries in this world. And yet there are so many prophetic traditions which guide us and, in, and instruct us to have the right frame of mind, the right mentality in terms of striving. We should be competing for more uh, perfection in faith. We should be competing for more uh, strength in our faith. And if we want to be better Muslims, then one way, is, uh, one way we can achieve this is we become well-mannered Muslims. We express good character. Our manner, our etiquette is exceptional. This is what we should aim um, to do or this is what we should aim to achieve in life. Someone who has good character is not only appreciated by friends and family, good character, humility, um, good character traits are even appreciated or acknowledged at least by the enemy. Because when someone is truthful, even the enemy will say, whatever, you know, I have problems with him, I disagree with him, uh, we don't see eye to eye, to eye. I don't like so and such and such other habits. But one thing I can say about him, he does not lie. He's not a liar. He speaks the truth. Or sometimes he speaks the truth um, in such a way which can be harsh, but he does speak the truth. So things like this, we should adopt all the characteristics, all the traits of good character. Another point which I would like to mention in light of taqwa is the role or the approach of the honorable companions of our beloved Prophet ﷺ. They were very careful. Their level of piety or their level of uh, refraining from sin or any undesirable element was such an example. It, their character was exemplary. And I would like to share with you a call of uh, what Sayyidina Anas ta'ala anhu said. He addressed the people of his time and he said to them that the deeds that you do, which you consider to be as light or as small as, um, as a strand of hair, such deeds in the time of our beloved Prophet wasallam were considered to be destructive by us. Meaning, he was making this point, that those deeds which you consider to be minor, so the contextual understanding is that the people that he was referring to, he was saying to them that what you consider to be uh, light in your eyes, in your opinion, those matters we consider to be destructive in the time, in the era of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So this is an expression of the fact that even something which may be classified as a minor transgression to the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu that was destructive. And this is an, uh, a reminder for us that if they had such uh, a careful approach to anything undesirable, we're not even talking about sin now, anything undesirable, the Sahaba were extra careful and showed exemplary um, precaution in terms of refraining from anything undesirable, we as believers must at least, at least strive to refrain from sinful actions. So the reminder for us is that we must become and remain believers who have this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
we must fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever we are. Whether we are alone, whether we are, uh, whether it's privately or publicly, we should have this realization. Until we do not have this realization, we've not really understood or experienced uh, any element of taqwa. A basic element of taqwa is that we try to have some kind of personal restraint. We try to refrain from sin. And this is part of being patient as well. This is part of patience itself. That you show tolerance and forbearance when you are striving to uh, not only do good deeds, but refrain from sinful actions. Imam Ghazali, uh, there is a, an opinion of his that he says, uh, refraining from sins is better than doing good deeds. And you're probably thinking, well, how is that the case? When you think about it, you understand. Because in reality, it's the same thing. When you refrain from sin, you are actually doing a good deed. And when you refrain from sin, you will do one of two things most of the time. You will either do something permissible, or you will do something righteous, a good deed. Yes, there are. There is an element there of yes, there will be there will be actions which may be permissible, or there will be actions that may be uh, slightly undesirable. But if you refrain from sins, then at least the other options that you have are not sinful options. So we must become believers who refrain from sins, publicly, privately. At the same time, we should not worry about where we are in terms of our uh, frame of mind. Our level of taqwa and realization on uh, alone should be equal, if not more, than our level of realization of, and taqwa when we are among people. That's when you know you're being sincere or you're walking on or you've, you've done something right. You know, when you pray on your own, you're able to do your uh, sunan and your nawafil and you, and you pray with such uh, enthusiasm. But on your own, you're rushing it and you're not doing the extra prayers. Why? Because no one's watching. That's actually a sign that we're not sincere. Greater expression of sincerity would have been that we actually worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more on our own or when we are alone. But unfortunately, the opposite happens. And a reminder of the element of when sinful deeds are done, make sure, ensure you do good deeds to uh, that become an expiation for it. And the third point, main point, was about good character. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ mentioned about himself that I was sent to perfect the character of mankind. Yes, one of the reasons for being sent, and he ﷺ specified for himself, was the perfection of, of the character of mankind. So if we have not learned this main lesson from our beloved Prophet ﷺ, what have we learned? What are we doing? Good character is something which will lead to uh, the closeness or nearness to the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment. Sayyiduna Jabir ta'ala and who said, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, on the Day of Judgment, uh, the closest to me or the closest to my gathering uh, will be those who expressed good character, who had good character, and they were gentle, they're not harsh. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Qur'an um, as having this quality of being gentle. And if had he been harsh, the people would not have gathered around him. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us in this particular hadith tradition that the most beloved to him, the closest to him, the closest to his gathering on the Day of Judgment, people who adopt good character, people who are gentle, and those who love others, and others love them, or people love them. When you show kindness to someone, most of the time they will show kindness to you. But don't show kindness to people expecting kindness back. Show kindness to people with sincerity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who changes hearts. Even the most harsh of people will, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, become soft-hearted and they will respond to your kindness with at least some positivity if you are sincere in, your, in showing your kindness. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our efforts to express taqwa, our efforts 
to do good and our efforts to show good character are accepted in his court. Ameen bi jahin nabil. Ameen. Keep watching Madani Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect from a sinful life. What can we expect? Return to Allah. Let us all reflect.